Hello again. In a couple of the other video series, how I left the watchtower and landed softly, and what God was doing before the watchtower, I gave a brief overview of my journey out of the watchtower, which was uh, at first intellectual. I was spiritually committed to the organization, but I wasn't intellectually 100% because the same day I was baptized in Montreal in 1971, the Watchtower released this, their first comprehensive Bible study tool, Aid to Bible Understanding. Of course, this was later replaced by Insight into the Scriptures in two volumes, which was larger print, but reproduced most of what's in here. The first thing I noticed when I took this rich feast home, and I was probably reading it for hours during that assembly, but I took it home and went through it methodically, combing it for all of the sources. I'd noticed in the other publications before that that there were Bible reference books sourced continually, and I knew nothing about these people. So when I took the aid book home, I started going through it systematically, actually making a, li a pencil list of all of the sources that were referenced in, in the aid book. The list ended up being over 300 sources long. And then I started to learn something about these people because the aid book in talking about them didn't give a lot of information as to why these people had credibility. Later I found out why. Gradually it occurred to me that the reason the Watchtower didn't give a lot of information was that almost all of these men that were sourced were clergymen. Now you know what the Watchtower says about the clergy class. Here's a sample from 1944. If you can see the front of this document, Raiding Christendom's, Christendom's Pantry, you can see the picture is of a lot of mass floating in midair. And the title of the, the booklet that the Watchtower put out in 1944, shortly after J.F. Rutherford's death, Religion Reaps the Whirlwind. And what they said in Religion Reaps the World when was, was this. The mask is down. Organized religion stands exposed as being not of the Lord God and Christ, but of their enemy, Satan, the devil. It stands stripped of its Christian professions and stands naked as being demonism. On the last page of the booklet, Jehovah's Witnesses and all other readers are warned to read only the Bible and quote all the pure and clean helps that Jehovah God provides. Well, at the time, as if you know anything about Watchtower history, you realize that the pickings were very slim in terms of Bible helps. They had a lot of topical books and booklets, but they had very little in the way of Bible reference materials. The aid book was a long way off. Modern Jehovah's Witnesses may therefore be alarmed to know that the masks are back on. What do I mean by that? Well, the Watchtower has decided that its sources are only credible when not identified as clergy of Christendom, who have, they've already called, and still call, as far as I, I can reckon, demonism. So if the demons are behind the clergy of Christendom, this is what we mean by the masks are back on, because what are these 300 plus sources? We're, we're, who are the men behind these 300 sources that the aid book and the insight book use? So we produce this track to alert Christians to the fact that this is a very good way of witnessing to witnesses. Who do you depend upon for your food? Because if the Watchtower is conceding that they're dependent for their more solid biblical food upon, well, the clergy of Christendom, then that explains why the masks are back on, that they can't afford to let people know that they're doing the old Orwellian double think here. You can't call these men of Satan demonic and at the same time use the materials. Or can you? As we pointed out in the Johannes Graeber series, that's a pattern, unfortunately, that Graeber and the occultists and, of course, a lot of people who aren't into the occult overtly a pattern they use is to demonize Christendom as well. At least they don't depend upon Christendom for their food. They depend upon the occult directly, oftentimes. But the Watchtower has a double thing going on. So in the track, and I'll read portions of it right now for you, this is how 
I gradually found out that I couldn't have both opinions at the same time. I could not be demonizing Christendom, slandering Christendom, and at the same time be wholeheartedly advocating the Watchtower's food because, well, here's how I reasoned on it about 20 years ago. Who really is the faithful and discreet slave who his master appointed over his domestics to give them their food at the proper time? It's a great question. In recent years, the Watchtower has not published books with the frequency of past decades. And since I wrote this 20 years ago, that's of course even more true. But in 1988, the Watchtower served up the most substantial feast Jehovah's Witnesses have ever enjoyed in sight on the scriptures. In two volumes, totaling 2,554 pages, Insight is a substantial meal indeed and seems to make Jehovah's Witnesses proud of their organization's resources and research capabilities. But where do Watchtower chefs get the ingredients for their culinary concoctions? Jehovah Watchtower writers hidden behind anonymity display impressive knowledge of history, archaeology, and Bible languages. For example, the Insight volumes impress with their exact erudition regarding the Greek and Hebrew languages. Indeed, such expertise is essential when one claims to be the only approved interpreter of God's word. But since the Watchtower has no recognized Greek or Hebrew scholars, historians, archaeologists, etc., who is stocking its pantry? Who are ultimately responsible for Jehovah's Witnesses' Bible knowledge? Make no mistake, the Watchtower does acknowledge many of its sources. Search the Insight volumes and you will find frequent references to authorities described only as scholar, Greek scholar, Hebrew scholar, historian, archaeologist, commentator, lexicographer, Bible scholar, and other impressive titles. Since the Watchtower seems to lean heavily on these men's credentials, Jehovah's Witnesses should know to whom they owe much of their Bible knowledge. In the next segment, we'll actually list, go through a list of a dozen or so of these major sources of the Watchtower materials in the, in the aid book and the insight books.